Welcome to another edition of Up Close. My name is Teba Mutsikua. Up Close is a daily current affairs show that profiles men and women making waves in the industries and gives newsmakers a human face. The program also gives newsmakers a platform where they can share their stories, their vision, in the hope to inspire you, our viewers. Stay tuned for the next half hour as we talk to Dr. Matole Mutsikua. Dr. Matola Mutsekha is undoubtedly one of Africa's courageous leaders who continues to help redefine the political and social fabric of post-colonial Africa. Trained as a lawyer, he has served the public in various roles, particularly contributing to the African National Congress struggle in exile. The post-apartheid society we enjoy today was conceptualized and researched by him and his team back in the late 80s in Zambia. Since then, he has served the ANC as the chief whip and member of its legal and constitutional affairs department amongst other roles but what do we really know who this african icon is dr matolo uh, how are you this morning thank you so much for making the time to chat to us thank you who is matolo uh, a product of contradictions let's hear about those contradictions uh, i come from uh, the kingdom of Balobetu, yes. who are called the people of the Dove, Bakwebo, uh, also the people of the Peak, Dikolobe. Okay. And uh, I grew in a small village called uh, Mamukadi. Uh, you, the word Mamukadi is a female name. Yes. Because from our tradition, we have always been um, uh, ruled by women. Okay. And women matriarchal occupy society. a sp matriarchal society. But uh, I say a product of contradiction because uh, in our family, uh, we were rainmakers for the Mujaji queenship. Okay. But uh, a section of our family uh, were the first to introduce Christianity. Mm -hmm. in the 1870s mm -hmm. and now uh, with the result that uh, you have uh, a traditionalist uh, part of our kingdom mm -hmm. and uh, a religious part of the kingdom mm -hmm. and uh, I happen to be part of the religious grouping okay. but when I grew up I found that uh, my parents had a leg in both and uh, my mother also came from uh, the family which was responsible for rainmaking in Mujaji. Okay. Uh, so uh, from the early age, I had to try and reconcile uh, the two. That must have been quite confusing, though, because uh, I'm thinking of a very strict uh, Christian upbringing. And then you also have to keep dabbling in certain... Uh, cultural practices that perhaps the, the 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 religious practices say that they're not that important to recognize. But that was also helpful because uh, it forced me to try to find uh, the truth mm -hmm. and uh, whether or not there was a meeting point between the two. And uh, you know, I had uh, I was a friend of my father. Uh, who passed uh, on in 1962. But before he passed on, he said uh, he has agreed with my uncle mm -hmm. that he must take me to a theological school. And now, uh, because my uncle was a policeman, he was deployed in Mozambique, mm -hmm. he didn't fulfill that. Okay. Now, I ended up uh, deciding that uh, I'm going to study medicine, but no one could pay for it. Mm -hmm. So uh, then I had to go and work and then paid my studies uh, for law and that's how I went into law. Okay, so initially you didn't want to go into law. Were you interested in theology at all or is it something that you just knew that it was your father's desire for you to pursue? You know, I was even too young mm. to be interested in anything. Yes, yes. But what I couldn't forget get was that my father wanted me to do theology mm -hmm. but my father used to take me along to go and work in the garden on Sunday mm -hmm. and now I say 
but you say you are a Christian. Why should we work on Sunday? He <laughs> said, yeah, but you know, these white people, they make us work for them from Monday to Saturday. And then they say we must go to church uh, on Sunday. Where will I do my own work? Mm. So he says, no, we can't go to church. We must first work. Uh, on Sunday. So it, 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 see, for me, that's another example of how confusing it will have been as a child. Because here are these uh, rules that have been set out based on uh, religious practices, and the very people who are telling you to follow those rules are not following those rules. And then on the other side, you know, there is the cultural stuff that is still being encouraged. No, my father said that uh, there's no problem with the church, but the church doesn't stop us from thinking for ourselves. Okay. And he said, if uh, the system doesn't allow time, you must create time. Mm. If you have to take time from uh, the Sunday, uh, which is a day of rest, to do so. Mm -hmm. So I grew up uh, with that understanding. Mm -hmm. But you see, mm. uh, I was also very close to old people. I never had friends uh, from young people. When you were growing up? Yes. And now they used to t tell me about uh, the greatness of our people. Mm. The fact that uh, we had a great empire of Mapungubye, mm -hmm. the empire of great Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. that we were able to uh, produce our own clothes, uh, to feed ourselves. Mm. And then uh, they said we have a knowledge of astronomy. They taught me about uh, the stars and the meaning of the stars and so on. Mm -hmm. And now uh, when I read the Bible, I saw there's a lot of reference. Mm -hmm to astrology and astronomy, mm -hmm. but that uh, the discussion of astronomy in the Bible was inferior to the uh, knowledge that I got from uh, my elders. Mm -hmm. Now I could see two competing systems. Uh, and you know, for instance, when it comes to the origins of humanity, the origins of the world. Mm -hmm. I found that uh, our people had a deeper explanation mm -hmm. than the, what uh, is uh, what in, was in, offered in the, Bible. In, in the Bible. But when you were making these discoveries, I, I find this interesting because it explains why you're so interested in uh, African cultures and us continue to ask questions and redefine ourselves. Uh, what age uh, were you at when you were starting to ask these questions? Were you still a young man growing up in high school? Uh, I was uh, at uh, secondary school, mm -hmm. and uh, when I went to matric high school, then uh, I rebelled against uh, uh, Christianity. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I stopped going to church uh, uh, in the 70s. Yes. So the last time I went to church was for political reasons, because I was working at the University of the North, mm -hmm. And uh, I became a friend with one Reverend Sir Gamela and uh, Bears Nodi. And then uh, Bears Nodi was uh, t teaching us politics and how we should uh, bring politics into the church. And that was the, the, the 70s. Now, uh, when I came to Pretoria in 1976, it was because of the influence of Bears Nodi because uh, I saw the was unrest, mm, mm. Uh, political unrest. Yeah, I want to so, hold there, Dr. Matomisa, and then we'll, we'll, we'll continue about that influence that Bayes Nudia had on your politics. We're getting up close with Dr. Matolo Mutsecha. We greatly appreciate any suggestions or questions or that you have for us. My Twitter handle is at NCB Mutsecha. Well, stay with us. Thank you for staying with us as we get up close with an African cultural icon, Dr. Matola Motsecha. So you say you became politicized by uh, the influence of Bayes Nodia. Yes, but also, you see, at the time when I was at Tarklop, mm -hmm. it was uh, in the early 70s when you had people like uh, Abraham Tiro, Aubrey Mukwena, mm -hmm. And there was a lot of political activity. And that was the time when, um, you know, Mozambique and uh, Samora Machel also uh, was freed. Mm -hmm. So I, left, I lived in that political environment. But because I was working and not a student, 
I was not able to participate in the student politics where yes. this was happening. Yes. So Bayas Nodir gave me a platform within mm -hmm. the church. Mm -hmm. So where, and at that time I no longer believed in Christianity. In Christianity. But I went into the church, I even became a church elder so that I can use that platform mm. for political purposes. But at the same time, I was studying law through uh, UNISA. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I then also had a problem with the, the concept of justice. To say here, law is mm. about justice, mm -hmm. but here is apartheid. Now I wanted to know what is actually the origins of the concept uh, of, of justice. justice. And uh, when uh, I studied, uh, I was in the final year with uh, Justice Musaneke mm -hmm. and Justice Mwepe at UNISA. Yes. But what happened was that uh, we were not allowed to eat in the same canteen with the white students. Mm -hmm. When we qualified as lawyers, we were not allowed to practice in the city of Pretoria. We had to go to Marabastad. Mm -hmm. And when we graduate, we were not allowed to graduate in the mm -hmm. city. Mm -hmm. We had to go to Harangua. Now I say to myself, but uh, why do we study and talk about justice mm -hmm. when everything is unjust? Mm -hmm. So the, the, those are the two points that must have politicized you. One mm -hmm. was um, where a, a culture that was supposed to be inferior for yes. you proved to be inferior than what was introduced into your community. And mm -hmm. then secondly is studying justice, but not uh, experience injustice justice, yourself. Exactly. So what happens when now this uh, political, uh, you know, thing starts to take over? How do you end up in exile? I didn't go to exile. Mm -hmm. What happened was that um, I got um, uh, distinctions in my LL Bachelor of Laws, LLB, and nice. then I got an exemption mm -hmm. and allowed to do a doctorate. Yes. So I had to do research. Then I went to Germany on a scholarship. Now I met uh, political exiles in Germany and uh, anti-apartheid organizations. Mm. Now I found a fertile place now to do politics, and then I worked with the ANC in mm -hmm. Germany mm -hmm. in the eighties. From there, <clears throat> I used to also to be asked to uh, address anti-apartheid uh, uh, meetings, solidarity mm -hmm. meetings, mm -hmm. and then 1981, I got a scholarship to go to America. I also got in touch with uh, you know ANC exiles, people like uh, uh, Yuma Sikila mm -hmm. uh, and, and others. Yes. And then I also did uh, political work uh, there. Mm -hmm. So uh, from <clears throat> America, I went back to Germany because now they withheld my passport. They didn't want to renew my passport mm -hmm. because I think they picked up that I was doing. You connecting with the, yeah. yeah the so I went to Germany. But you see, at that time, the Germans were friends to the South Africans. Mm. Now they negotiated with the embassy. They gave me a passport. Mm -hmm. I came home. I got a senior lectureship at the University of South Africa. What was, what was that experience like? I mean, this is the 80s. Yes. You have spent uh, a couple of uh, years outside of South Africa in a, in a world that was not as segregated uh, as it was here in South Africa. You return with all this knowledge that you have and this experience of freedom, what was it like coming back? You know, uh, I came back with a determination that mm -hmm. uh, it is not true that uh, African people are inferior to mm. any other people mm. and that therefore they deserve to be free like everybody in the world that I've seen. So I came back with the determination that uh, I want to make a contribution to the liberation of our country and the people. Mm -hmm. So when I worked at UNISA, I found that uh, I have an opportunity to interact with young people, mm -hmm. uh, to influence them. I was their lecturer. Mm -hmm. You know, you have lawyers like Nano Matlala, you know, Semenya, who are now senior counsels. Yes. And then uh, I also founded an organization called Democratic Lawyers Organization. And then these lawyers, young lawyers, were part of that. So I was able to... Was uh, there no resistance to, to, to these efforts that you were trying to, do, to no, make? No, actually, young people mm -hmm. were keen to learn more about uh, 
the outside world mm -hmm. and what the ANC uh, and other liberation groups were doing outside. But what about from the authorities when they started to see you? Because you're basically mobilizing uh, these young lawyers uh, to become politicized. No, you see, I lived in Mamilodi. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to invite them to my house and then I opened the Radio Freedom. Yes. And we listen to Radio Freedom. Okay. And then we have a discussion around that. Okay. And then, uh, of course, again, I used to uh, I established a cultural uh, institute in Mamilodi okay. and then uh, bring them and then uh, claim to be talking about social problems. Like, you know, that time people were killing uh, people, mm -hmm. calling them witches. Mm -hmm. So I would try and talk to young people, explain that, you know, unless you are a witch, you won't know who else is a witch. Mm -hmm. So you will kill uh, wrong people. Mm -hmm. And that was the time when we had, uh, you know, street committees and um, very strong civic organization. Mm. So yeah. it was very subtle the way very that they subtle. were politicized. Let's but take another break, uh, Dr. Matola Musaha, and then we'll continue with our discussion. Do you have any suggestions or comments for us? My Twitter handle is at TP Musikwe. We'll see you just now. Thank you for staying with us as we continue to get up close with one of Africa's greatest icons, Dr. Matole Monsecha. Dr. Monsecha, this, uh, it's interesting, I think this is around about the time where you were setting the foundations for two things that uh, uh, you, you, know, you are now well known for, which is the work with the ANC as well as uh, your work with African heritage. So let's continue and just wrap up your time with the lawyers and how you were slowly trying to politicize them. I used heritage mm -hmm. to educate the youth about the struggle. Yes. But I was also a practicing lawyer. Yes. Defending the victims uh, of apartheid then. Mm -hmm. Now the ANC learned about my work mm -hmm. and they invited me to uh, uh, Harare. Okay. I met with them mm -hmm. and then they took me to Lusaka where I met uh, with the uh, Jacob Zuma and uh, Joan Tlatla mm -hmm. at night in a township in the middle of nowhere. Yes. They didn't know. And then uh, I briefed them about my work mm -hmm. and they decided that uh, I must be appointed to the Department of uh, Legal and Constitutional Affairs, mm -hmm. which was headed by uh, Dr. Zola Square. Okay. So uh, I worked with them. And so I, just like that, you left your work in South Africa and decided to... What, what was it that they said that made you say, you know what, I'm going to stay in Lusaka and, and, and work on this? You see, they appointed me to the committee. Yes. But uh, said I must work from home okay. to organize uh, the lawyers. Mm -hmm. And then in addition, uh, there was a program called uh, Post Apartheid South Africa mm -hmm. where we had to do research as to what should the new South Africa, mm. the Post Apartheid South Africa, look like. Mm. So I was involved in the research work, mm. organizing lawyers and also organizing civic organizations with people like Bill Jardin, mm -hmm. uh, where we take civic leaders from different provinces into Harare, Lusaka uh, for training. That was actually yeah. dangerous work that you were doing yes, at that but time. but you see, particular. because I was working at UNISA, yes. uh, I established ties with uh, the University of Zambia. Oh, I so see. when the ANC wants me, the University of Zambia. You travel under the pretense of a, that this is academic work. And then we did the same uh, at, at the University of uh, Zimbabwe yes. with uh, Professor Makamure, Professor yes. Austin, so I could move around. Mm. And of course, until they decided in the 1989, they discovered this thing and then uh, they stopped my uh, passport. Mm. And uh, actually, they sent Mama Sela yeah. to kidnap me at the airport. Wow. But uh, Dr. Manto Chavalala, who was our secretary, yes. uh, lost my ticket. Yes. And then I couldn't travel. So when Mama Sela came here, I was not there. But otherwise, I would, have been, I would have been banned in Fla Flag Plus. Wow, yes. wow. But now we, what we did actually, we established research committees yes. in all universities, mm -hmm. uh, including the especially black universities. Mm -hmm. We ran an underground office at VETS. 
mm. uh, where we would bring uh, as activists to discuss yes. the concept of a new uh, South Africa. I worked with, uh, I was in the same committee with uh, Judge this Pius Langer, uh, Maduna, Penuel Maduna, mm -hmm. uh, Teddy Pekanu, mm -hmm. and then uh, we sat in Harare and we came up with the idea of a constituent assembly mm -hmm. and then we recommended to the leadership of the ANC and then they adopted that uh, concept that we must have the constituent assembly mm -hmm. and they decided that they must get someone reputable to announce it or propose it publicly mm -hmm. and they got uh, Bishop Tutu Yes. So it came as if uh, it's something that came internally, okay. but uh, it was a brainchild of the ANC uh, it, itself. Okay. So we, I, 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 you know, we don't have much time left. But what I'm enjoying about our conversation is you are reminding us that it was the work of uh, a lot of different people. You know, the 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 freedom that South Africa enjoys uh, today. Would you say the society that we live? When you think back and you guys were working and researching and designing this post-apartheid society. Is it the society that we currently are living in? It is the society that um, we are living in. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are people who are now beginning to abuse that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I don't think we teach our people enough of where we come from. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. these things did not happen by accident. It was by design. So we need to get more people learning about that history mm -hmm. and understanding that uh, we started a building it's not complete it's not the time to pull the building mm -hmm. apart mm -hmm. it's a time to identify where there are weaknesses and improve on the weaknesses mm -hmm. and nobody said that uh, the product is perfect we're saying a foundation has been laid but uh, we want future generations to complete that uh, uh, building, mm. uh, you know, the circumstances change from time to time, so nothing is cast in stone. But it's no time to fight amongst ourselves to throw uh, uh, insults at one another. But the time to, you know, the president of the country, Jacob Zuma, has called for a dialogue. Mm -hmm. And let's have decent dialogue, differ where we differ, but let's continue dialoguing because mm. the main idea is that we build a new South Africa. And of course, you, you, you continue to do this through your institute now, the Cairo Heritage Institute. We don't have enough time to chat about it, but I just want to close off. And, 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 and I, I'm, I'm interested in just knowing, because you are also a father and you are a, the husband of the basic um, education minister, um, outside of all of this, who is Matola Mutsekha now today? I met my wife in struggle. Mm -hmm. We married during struggle, yes. and uh, we share one thing, mm -hmm. that uh, we have to contribute to the building uh, of this nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, a wonderful relationship. We have brought up many kids, including those <laughs> that are not ours. Uh, some of them now identified with us to an extent that uh, by children, we no longer just mean biological children. Yes. We have a tribe of our own. Yes. Uh, if it was not because of old age, I would say maybe we should declare her the queen <laughs> because she did more than I did oh, in, wow. in building the family. Yes. Yes. Dr. Machado Sekha, thank you for staying with us. I wish we had an hour today. I really do because there's so much that we need to unpack. Let's hope we'll find time. Again. We'll find time again. Yes. I, I okay. really think we should. Okay. Thank you so much for making the time. So Okay, that's how we're going to wrap up today's edition of Up Close. You can catch us same time weekdays on ACBC News, DSTV Channel 404. I absolutely love today's episode, and you know you're going to definitely find it on our website, youtube.com forward slash SABC News. My Twitter handle, at Tepi Musikua. Until next time, it's been great. Bye-bye.